So, Jim Davis, are you excited about today's show? Yeah, so excited. I, wait, were you talking in my head? I mean, I have been doing this class for like two months. I'm glad to see we're getting somewhere with it. Yeah, you know, I didn't give you permission for that. Come on, you didn't even ask. Come on. Oh, no, no, no. Come on. Come on, man. The Kickstarter's out now, and we finally get to talk about the Scion on today's web DM. I, I mean... Yeah, I knew this would happen again, so I'm ready. No, no, no. Yep. <clears throat> Oh, come on, man! Nope, not again. Worlds of WebDM Weird Wastelands is our first book, and it's live on Kickstarter now. It's an environment-based toolkit for DMs and players where we give you everything you need to create player-driven 5e games in the fantasy post-apocalypse. We're introducing new support for wilderness exploration, giving you a complete class, the Scion, 12 new subclasses, tons of locations with maps, monsters, NPCs, adventure hooks, and hey, it's us so you know we're going to include badass encounter tables and more. We're writing it exactly how we think a 5e book should be well-organized, full of references, and our WebDM wisdom, with tips and support in how to make the content easily fit into any 5e game and run the best games of your life. Back it on Kickstarter now. Link here and in the comments and description. All right, Jim. Let us mm. talk about a fun subject, a subject that uh, has been uh, basically renting space in my head for like two week, two months, Three yeah. months? I don't even remember yeah. now. It, a while it, now. The yeah. memory has been suppressed. Uh, <laughs> but the Scion. We, we yeah. uh, I don't know if our, 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 anybody out there watching the show has noticed, but we have this thing going on right now. Um, yes. Um, it's That it just started. It kicked off a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago. Uh, but it's a Kickstarter. And uh, so today we're going to talk about the Scion. We are. We are going to talk about it. And like, I, this is one of those things where I, I love psionics. I love the, I, yeah. the, the, the idea of them. I, of course I, I'm a huge fan, a science fantasy fan. Like I know for a mm -hmm. lot of people, psionics is like, no, psionics is sci-fi and magic is fantasy. And I'm like, what are you talking about? If there's psionics in my sci-fi, it's a fantasy now. Like, it's, yeah. like I don't, yeah. psionics aren't real, so they're uh, supernatural. <laughs> yeah. So they, they seem a natural fit for fantasy games. But I understand for a lot of people, like, that's not necessarily the case. And there's this hard division. And for me, like, Dungeons and Dragons has had psionics in it from the very beginning. Every edition of D&D I've played has had psionics. Now, there's been troubles with how it's been done in the past, which has sort of informed how we want to do it. But like, yeah. The idea that this sort of inner power, like like sheer will and power of the mind can affect change our reality. You're not relying on outside force of magic or, or something like it, it fits into all the other vast array of supernatural forces that are in the D&D world. Mm -hmm. It's in the appendix in literature for, for that inspired the whole game to begin with. And like for a weird wastelands, like how are we not going to have some psionics in a weird wastelands? Right. <laughs> yeah, it we gotta have really a whole seem, new new class. <laughs> it wouldn't be that weird. It, that's why I'm, that's my thing. It would just be a wasteland at that point if that's you true. didn't have that's something, some alteration crop up from the from the from the terrain itself, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. To me, I, I mean, I'm right there with you, Jim. Uh, psionics or some version thereof. Has, uh, has always intrigued me in any kind of uh, uh, fantasy or science fantasy that I've ever I've ever seen. It's the thing that always stuck out the most. Well, the first time I read yeah. Dune, the Bene Gesserits, and like oh, yeah. their abilities. Like I, I'm sorry, but to me they are they are there's that's psionics. Like they're just using yeah, yeah. their mental power to to exact change, to listen in, to to read thoughts, things like that. You know, you go to Star Wars, which I can already hear people. Well, that's science fiction. No, that's science fantasy. Science I'm sorry. fantasy. Come on, it's, it's got a magic force in it. <laughs> it's got psionics in it. <laughs> it's got psionics in it. Um, and there's a bunch of different races. Uh, you know, a lot of people just fight with like melee weapons. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's a fantasy. Um, Come on. <laughs> yeah, uh, but even like going into uh, D and D settings themselves, like I, right. you know, the, one of the first series I read was the Driss series. And my original DM oh, yeah. was like, no, don't read them in publication order. I want you to read them in chronological order. 
So you start with yeah. the Dark Elf trilogy first. And so when you get like when it gets to House of Blodra and you mm-hmm. start like to me, I was like, wait a minute, I'm sorry. There are these freaking there's these freaking psionicists in the middle of all this. <laughs> now sign me up. Like I know what house I want to be in, right? Right. Uh right. but like it's always been there. Just like it's waiting in the background. Uh yeah. and I, I don't know, man. Yeah, no. I just get it, so it's not- excited I can't even talk. No, it's not just the drow. You know, there are all the Underdark uh, civilizations have some sort of major psionic component, whether it's Dragar mm-hmm. or Mind Flayers or whatever. Like, it makes sense in that. Like, it's it's similar to a wasteland in the Underdark. And, and we'll get yeah. to, you know, hints at what we're going to talk about later uh, aside. Like, that's a theme mm-hmm. that kind of runs through the psionics inclusion in D&D. Because, like, Dark Sun is the big psionic yeah. setting for Dungeons and Dragons, and there's a very specific reason for it. Psionics sort of makes sense. It's been fitted into the world building. Magic destroyed this place. A new thing came out of it because if we continued to use magic, arcane magic specifically, in this way, mm-hmm. like you know, we just make make it worse. So psionics sort of fills this niche. But then, like everything is psionic in Dark Sun. The plants, <laughs> every you know, like everyone, <laughs> you know, it's it it uh, it's also there to just up the challenge level of the game itself. Um, but Eberron has psionics baked into it as well and, and sort of fit it in. And, and like, stepping beyond D&D to, to other influences, like, you have settings like Warhammer 40k, where psionics and magic are presented as the same thing, just depending on which perspective you're looking at. That might be how you run psionics. Now, we have our own take. We, we wanted something different and unique and, and sort of, uh, you know, exactly what we wanted out of a scion but i think like it feels natural and like mm-hmm. to exclude a scion because of you know 20th century language or associations with like pop parapsychology or something is like let's get past that and look at what's really cool going on like let's really get to what's awesome here uh and yeah. um let this uh, concept play with all our other concepts yeah, mo- most most definitely. So everyone out there, we're talking about the Scion today. Hopefully the promo has come out, so like you could literally be looking at this while we're talking about it. Uh, please go and back the Kickstarter if you have not already done that. And just so you know, if you become a patron, like we do offer some little updates a little bit before the public. So just a thought. Um, but yeah, Jim, let's get into this. So you mentioned Steven. like uh, the, yeah. the Scion that we wanted to make. And, yeah. um, and, and, and so basically, uh, first part here is like, why, why should people give a crap about our scion that is coming out in this book? And yeah. this is, this is why I think, uh, I, I think people should give a crap. Um, I want, I, I wanted to make this scion as, um, accessible as possible, A, uh, but B, I wanted to be a workhorse because I think yeah. that, um, Past scions, uh, or at least the ones that I have I've been studying, they just by the end you have like this an insane array of abilities, right? And it almost can right. seem like too much and just yeah. disparate and all over the place. So I wanted to like completely change that like thought process, and so it's much more stripped down. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it's I would say it's more of a like a, ju- a generalist when it comes to each discipline. Like there are disciplines. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I, but I wanted it to be a thing that um, felt different from every other in iteration that has come prior. I wanted yeah. the obvious nods to be there of like, I'm looking at you, crystals. I remember you. Crystals are cool. Oh, I mm. remember you. This particular discipline. <laughs> um, you know, like, I, like I wanted it to feel like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, there's side points. Okay, I remember that. That's a thing. You know. Um, but yeah, yeah. When you get to the actual like expressions of your psionic effects, um, that's where I wanted things to to feel different, and I I think that we have achieved that personally. Nice, nice. Yeah, it, it was important to us, and uh, like you you've taken the design lead on this to sort of ta- first off tackle a full class that is a scion, but to make it feel different than prior iterations of D and D scions, and so like. When you talk about that feeling different and how we're going to have elements that are familiar uh, to, to to people who are a fan of prior editions, uh, Scion, or want something familiar to sort of 
hook their identity or their imagination or the whatever on, you know, like, mm -hmm. what is it that we're doing to have that familiarity and then build on it so that it feels different? Like, can you walk us through what the disciplines are like? Sure, sure. Uh, when it comes to the disciplines, the, um, each discipline has basically three aspects or three effects. Mm, when I take mm. telekinesis, you're going to get three things you can do. I can move stuff, I can hurl stuff, and I can like cr like crush and damage stuff, right? Yeah. So yeah. all of that is built into the discipline. But when it comes to the actual expression of that, each one of those effects, you have an effect, a, a thing that you can do for free. I, right. I can right. just do this thing. It doesn't require any psi points. If, if I mean, if... Wizards can have cantrips and sorcerers and clerics. All If they can have cantrips and these things that they can do just all day, like why can't Sionesis, right? So like that's, yeah, where, yeah, that's sort of where I was coming from. But I, but I didn't want it to look like that. I didn't want cantrips and spells and whatever. I wanted it to be integrated. I wanted it to feel like this is just the expression of your power and I'm just not putting any real effort into this. When I do put right. effort, things are going to change drastically. And so that's the thing. That's when I when I say it's a workhorse that can kind of go all day. I can pick stones up that are thirty pounds and move them all day. Like like if you worked in a place that is trying to rebuild like a home or some defenses or whatever, and you can move thirty pound rocks all day, Jim, would you would you say that that is a that is a boon to that particular community sure. or society? Right? Yeah, it costs them nothing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And but the thing is, is it's not like to me, it's not overpowering. So like. That's that's just like a, a, a brief example. And so yeah. when it comes to the other disciplines, you can kind of just take that that, you know, I mean, again, if people are looking at the promo now, they're they are seeing it, you know, for telepathy mm. or for psychometabolism or psychoportation. Like there's a little bit that you can do just for free. And then as you invest more of yourself, you can you can expand these expressions of of, of psionic effects into greater uh, 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 works on the environment itself. Absolutely. Now, yeah. Yeah. A another reason why I think this is why you want, this is why we did it this way. Um, is, is because, uh, we didn't want it to look like spellcasting. Like yes, I don't, I didn't right, want this to exactly. look like spellcasting at all. This is psionics. Like literally I think about something and it happens. These people, they can hear the vibrations of the universe on the right frequency and just know how to sync up to it. And so that, that doesn't weigh that much. It weighs nothing because they know the right frequency or whatever, however you want that to, to be in your head. That's, that's my thing, uh, is let it be, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and when you, when you are expressing your powers, whether you want a, a, t a finger to your temple or a hand extended, that is completely up to you. If you want that, you don't have to have that because, again, these are psionics. So, you know, you you can just have something happen, and then most everybody's kind of looking around, going like, "Yeah, yeah. no uh, one okay. was waving their arms around. No one was <laughs> yeah. saying magic words." Yeah, because to me, that's the big thing, and, and what I what I really like about um, you know something like the manipulability of of telekinesis is like. There's no spell casting there. You don't have to take those six seconds to activate your your mage hand and mm -hmm. have and have this magical force move a thing for you, which and you may or may not be able to see that magical force as as it manifests as a spectral hand. Whereas just the manipulability of telekinesis is this thing moves because I wanted it to move, mm -hmm. and like. And that is a key difference that I feel like is narratively distinct enough to justify it being non-magic and also like worthy of having a mechanical distinction to it so that the, yeah, you're just like, is this, can I, can I affect this object? It's, it's here. I might as well have it in my hand. It's that close to me and that's how easy it is to move. And that's a really, that's a really uh, important thing for, for the way that these disciplines feel. Yeah. I think it's really good. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm excited to see, uh, you know, how it pans out. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I mean, but that's the thing is because of the way we have it structured, uh, where you can, you can basically have just like 10 discipline advances. Mm -hmm. Um, that means that you can be really, really good at two disciplines. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So people who have, especially the more recent UA, uh, uh, 5e, uh, mystic that was uh, then scrapped and broken up into sure, subclasses. Yeah, yeah. 
Like, you, to me, you had just too much option. I loved it, in a way, but you had so many options. Better. And you just forgot, like, like because you can, you know, you got however many disciplines. You, It's just, <laughs> yeah, it's overwhelming. So that's why I wanted to just, like, rein it in. Be uh-huh. like, no, no, no. You don't have all this insane stuff. Like, I wanted it to be more, like, themed. And again, when, when I'm looking at either, like, the Bene Gesserits or when I'm looking at Jedi, like, they have a small set of powers, right? Mm-hmm. That they then use as, to to great effect. And so that's what I wanted this to feel like. I didn't want you to just have 20 different things you could do. Now, technically, here's the thing. And I was going to warn people. <laughs> you could do that. You could ruin yourself. And again, you could make a bad character with this. I'm going to freely admit that. If you pick yeah, one sure. discipline and only advance it once, you're not going to be able to do a lot. You'll be able to do a lot of different things, but you won't be able to do them to great effect. And so it's one of those things of like, I want to take, you know, it, it would be the effect, the in essence, like the, I want to multi-class and take, you know, one level of each class. Right? Sure. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you put could do that. I put 14s in all my stats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you could, could do that. It's possible. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but you might not like that. So for me, like when I looked at this, I like at first I wanted to put limits. Like, no, you can only have this many disciplines, but then glad I was talking yeah, about that. Yeah, it's like, cho- no, yeah, that's let okay. people make that's the character right. they want to make. Yeah. But for me, like I would too. definitely make a, a character with two disciplines, maybe three. So they got one maxed out and maybe the others. That, so it gives you, cause you could literally Some make variety. a Jedi. I want to yeah. take telekinesis, uh, uh, meta creativity and tele- telepathy. There you are. You've made your Jedi that can move things around. They can create a, a weapon. They can they can put shields up to protect themselves. They can read people's minds and and Jedi mind trick them. Like they you're welcome. There like you, go. you you made your Jedi. Um, so y- 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 you know, like that's that to me that is literally the first benchmark that I wanted to hit. Can I make a Jedi with this? And so yeah. I did, once I did that, I started adding a little bit more color and stuff, uh, especially with the subclasses and everything. When start, especially thinking about like different uh, iterations of what would be a, a scion, like, like started thinking about edge cases, like river Tam from Firefly and Serenity. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that she's a psionic, like she just has, you know, basic, like, whether you want to call it telepathy or clairsentience, it's one of those two things, but she has a general idea of what's going on around her and she knows what you're going to do. So like fight that, like go ahead and yeah. multi-class your monk into Scion <laughs> and get a little bit of that and you're welcome. Like, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. There's a lot, uh, there's a lot to play around with. And I, I like the, um, the conceptual space around it. The, the thing mm-hmm. that I like about, the you know what, what we've got for our scion and then sort of where we're headed is its ability to be so adaptable and so mm-hmm. versatile as both a concept and and how you play it like the difference in making it not a spellcaster is that spellcasters can do whatever like whatever you can think of there's a spell you could prep it in a slot and cast it and whatever but like at the end of the day you're going to run out of spell slots at the end of the day you know you're you're going to reach your limit whereas with the scion it's more like this is this is sort of who they are they're tapping into a different kind of power and it can be flavored and explained and like expressed in so many different ways the narrative of it is so uh strong um and mm-hmm. so versatile that's what i really really dig about it yeah and and to kind of kind of uh move into just like more narrative uh, aspects of the design but still keeping the spellcaster part uh in mind and the reason why we wanted to move away from that is this is the wastelands right yeah like is there are there still schools of 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 wizardry around (laughs) maybe like one maybe one survived you know where somebody's collected a few tomes and texts and they're starting to teach magic again right maybe there are random gods still out there that or maybe forgotten gods that have come back that are now granting powers and everything. Right. But no, no, yeah. no, the, the plane has been cleared of uh, like, uh, like, uh, like our promo says the clean plane has been cleared of all these chattering minds. And now you can truly hear the beckoning of this new force that has arisen to, to, to supplant the former, like uh, arcane and divine uh, essences that have kind of filled the space and led to its destruction. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's absolutely. what I love about the Scion is that in a wasteland where there are no teachings anymore, there's no gods coming to save you. Right. You just all of a sudden one day start hearing 
hearing this noise in your own mind and until you find it, uh, you look elsewhere, you look everywhere, and until you look within and realize that, no, 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 that's you. You're the tuning fork. You're the reason that note has been playing and you figure out what it means and how to move things with it. Like, that's what I, that's what I love as far as like a narrative of just like, where do scions come from? It's like, well, yeah. unfortunately, a lot of people had to get out of the way <laughs> because, you know, all their minds are, are kind of gumming up the, the, the sure. astral plane so to speak. Uh, but I don't yeah, know, man. Yeah. I just, I'm, I'm excited though. No, it's, I, it, I think it's a good place to start. I, I, I kind of like how, you know, you know, we're, we're thinking about it because I do think that there is a, a reason that like dark sun and psionics work so well. It's because they have a strong narrative, like Eberron and psionics works really well because there's a strong link with them. And for the implied setting of weird wastelands, we wanted the same thing. We wanted a strong link mm -hmm. between why why psionics and and for the answer that we landed on was psionics have always had a connection to the astral plane the astral plane is the plane of the mind the plane of the spirit mm -hmm. the sort of the 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 you know the prime material is material it's physical it's whatever the the astral is conceptual mental whatever and yeah. and like the sudden death by cataclysmic apocalypse or apocalypses uh you know of the the mental plane, the plane of the mind suddenly being clear because all these minds and spirits are elsewhere. They've moved on. Something else has happened to them. Something terrible, maybe like mm -hmm. gives those who remain a, a clarity when they're able to tap into that and unlocks this thing that previously only, uh, uh, you know, only a sliver of the D and D population is able to mind flayers, you know, or civilizations devoted entirely to it that already live in desolate places like the underdark. And that yeah. now that the whole planet's desolate, now that you, you have this sort of clarity of, of the, uh, of the astral plane that some people could tap into, they realize, Oh, we can, we can discipline ourselves. We can, we, we might all be capable of this, but it still takes mm -hmm. work. It takes discipline. And like, to me, it taps into those conceptual overlap between like wizard and monk, which is where I think you can sneak the scion in, you know, that, that kind of, mm -hmm. you know, we you know, seclude ourselves away from, from others, train our minds and, and yeah. be able to like study this thing and make it work for us. That's what I like about it. Oh, 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 definitely. And, and unfortunately, like when, 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 uh, D and D kind of co-opted the idea of a monk, as a monk is someone who <laughs> meditates and fights, but like, no, no, no. A monk is just someone who like cloisters themselves away and adopts a certain lifestyle, a monastic tradition of just like, yeah. you know, being poor of service of whatever you want to call it, like whatever that it is. Right. It, it again, you know, a martial art is an external expression and this can be an internal, you know, this is, this is your, your, your Tai Chi to, to the Kung Fu, uh, so to speak. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. To, to my martial arts brethren and sister out there that know what I'm talking about, um, you know, feeling those internal flows of energy and, and being able to work them, uh, uh, in a slightly different way. Absolutely love it. Uh, I mean, yeah. it's, it is, it is a, a big part of, of, um, of just like, you know, the conceptual space for this. Um, yeah. And yeah. I, I don't know, man. Just, and, it, well, it also, and it also makes sense for the wasteland. You, you touched on it a minute ago, yeah. but I think it's worth looping back around to where it's like in the wasteland where, where scarcity is, is, is the norm, where the infrastructure of society has fallen away, where the apocalypse has, has caused a either gradual or rapid decline in the standard of living, then who, where are scrolls to learn spells coming from? Where, where are the teachers who can teach even the sorcerers? Mm -hmm. Right. Even s somebody needs to, ch to let a sorcerer know, like, OK, this is how you take this connection to to magic power that you have that you're born with and shape it into something. Right. Like they're yeah. still casting spells. They still have the, the words, the gestures, the, the access to the materials need to be there. The spell focus. All of these things require some sort of support. The scion needs none of that. The scion is adaptable. Yeah. They don't need the components. They don't need the spells. They don't need all these external things. They don't need supplies or the like mm -hmm. in order to work their power. They just find it within themselves. And so thematically, 
I find that's really, really fits with the post-apocalyptic wasteland because there's mm-hmm. survivors there. They are yeah. reaching deep down for something to help them out. And in when, you know, the themes of post-apocalypse are very often like sifting through the debris of the old and making use of, of recycled and refurbished and scavenged things like conceptually to have the scion be nowhere a new thing. No one knows this. Like, like mm-hmm. we are a valuable asset because no one yet knows what we're capable of. There's not many of us yet, so you might not have heard of us. There's, there's not a, a institutional memory of us as scions yet, or, or maybe only a small portion of it might remember. You know, so it's mm-hmm. like a new thing, the birth of a new world, uh, and and I really dig that on a thematic level. Um, it's very cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, most definitely. And also thinking about like um, how psionics and magic, uh, the interplay between them, is is something that that in the wording of air, of of the disciplines, we tried to keep it where this is something different. This is slightly yeah. different than magic, um, and so if you would like to keep it that way, by all means. Are there going to be some edge cases where there's some overlap? Yes. Uh, especially when it comes to, say, like uh, some of the psychometabolism or uh, clairsentience. Uh, when you're sensing the auras of places, you can probably detect some magic with that. But mm-hmm. like when it comes to the actual overlap, you know, when you think about, say, dispel magic. Does that work against psionics? Like mm-hmm. baseline... I would say no, it doesn't, because this isn't magic. This is psionics. This is a d- slight. This is different. Now, some people might not like that. So uh, I think that what we'll probably have in the final text is a little variant section on this. I don't know, Jim. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, certainly. You could easily just say detect. You could easily say detect magic and psionics and dispel magic and psionics and just put right. DMs add a writer to your spells in your head or write it down on paper. It doesn't really matter to us. We just hope that you lo- like read this. If you like it, awesome. If you don't, hey, that's, you know, sorry it's not your cup of tea. Sure. But I hope that it's at least new enough and different enough that it that it sparks some ideas uh, for your own campaign. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I think it's it's one of those things where we're we're committed to having a a toolkit as much as as we can, and that means that whatever we include in the book, um, discussing and going over the ways that you could fit it into your own campaigns is important to us. And so for some, they they want to be able to say like, yeah, I, whatever powers these disciplines are, are capable of invoking, like I want everyone to be able to sort of contend with it. Like, you know, I, I, it doesn't matter to me that it's psionic power. I still should be able to counterspell it, or I still should be able to like, you know, have an anti-magic shell up and not worry about it. And so we'll have advice for how to integrate that. But as written, they're, they're separate because they are separate sources of power. They're separate supernatural forces that are at work. But at the same time, fifth edition is an edition of, of, uh, uh, you know, the game where there's a, a lot of that's already taken care of. A lot of the spells, they, they work on conditions and they work mm-hmm. on effects rather than needing to be explicitly magical. So the interplay between magic and psionics in some part is is defined by the rules as they're, they already are. We're just taking advantage of mm-hmm. that and finding ways to you know, integrate what we're creating into the existing system. But also like we, we can't discount that a dungeon master is going to need to be there to handle every f- edge case because yeah. we don't want to have a 600 page book that you have to <laughs> have a reference manual just to look at <laughs> you know like yeah, uh, we want that something was never that's the intent. Be, <laughs> right uh, just enough for you to fit it into your game and make it work for you because to me it's important that narratively speaking that they are separate forces um that that they are they're supernatural certainly but mm-hmm. magic is its own thing. And to me, magic is distinct and, and narratively it's, it, it has its own set of rules to it. And in, in, you know, in fantasy gaming, it's, it's the verbal components of it, the magic words of the spell, the gestures that have mystical significance, the sympathetic material components that unlock the magic and create this supernatural effect. And to have another class of that, that's, you know, another class of supernatural power that says, that's great. Do your thing. 
we're over here exploring something new and something different. It was important, um, but got to make it work for individual tables. So we'll have uh, guidelines for all the different ways that you could uh, mm -hmm. fit it into your games. Yeah. So uh, we hope you enjoyed that. Uh, hope you enjoy the shows here. Please like, subscribe, uh, hit the bell if you haven't, and please check out our Kickstarter uh, and uh, support that if possible. Uh, we love you and uh, see you next week.